Hello guys, I am Flash Isaac and I'll be taking you through WAEC physics questions and answers. Don't fail to subscribe to this channel to get updates immediately I release new videos. And don't fail to use the link below to check out my videos. Thank you and let's begin. Taking a look at this first question, it says state Newton's law of universal gravitation. The Newton's law of universal gravitation says that any two bodies in the universe, let's say any two bodies, body A and body B, is attracted to each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. So this implies that once you have two bodies or any two bodies in the universe, the force of attraction between them is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So let's say if this is body A and this is body B, body A obviously has mass, let's say 2 kg, body B obviously have mass, let's say 3 kg. So the force between them is proportional to the product of their masses, which will be m1 m2 that is 2 times 3, 6 kg, and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. If the distance between these two bodies is let's say 2 meter, so that means 2 square. So the force will be proportional to 6 over 2 squared. Now, the definition. If you are defining this in your exam, simply say that Newton's law of universal gravitation states that any two bodies in the universe are attracted to each other with a force that is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. Now, in mathematics, we don't solve with proportionality. Or, when there is proportionality in mathematics, we change it to equality sign to get a constant. In that case, the force is equals g m m over r square, where g is the universal gravitational constant, big G. And this big G is different from small g. Small g is the acceleration due to gravity. And acceleration due to gravity is a force that brings all objects down as object goes up. Now, we've answered that question. The second one says, define gravitational field. Gravitational field is any region or space where gravitational force is experienced. So if this, if there's a gravitational force here, and the gravitational force is, this is the region where it takes place, that area that the gravitational co uh, force covers, the region in which the gravitational uh, force is experienced, that is the gravitational field, just like electric field. Electric field is that region where electric force is experienced. And uh, B says, derive the equation relating the universal gravitational constant and as uh, an acceleration of free fall, small g. Though, okay, in this case, we are trying to guess the relationship between the big G and small g. To get the relationship between them, first, we already have this formula for big G. And from Newton's law, Newton's second law, we're able to prove that LF is equals mg. Newton's first law says that a body that is in motion we continue to be in that state of motion unless it is acted upon by a force. Now, the second law says that the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the force applied. That means force is proportional to the uh, rate of change of momentum. And the third law says that action and reaction are equal and opposite. So force is equal to mg from Newton's law. If force equals mg, this is that is for bodies falling downwards. 
for linear bodies force is equals ma so take a look at it force is equals mg is equals this so relating then this is for this is force and this is force it implies that mg is equals g m m over r square it makes a lot of sense right if that makes a lot of sense it therefore means that g is equals g m m over m r square because we are making g subject formula so we have to divide both sides by m so this m cancels this m small g is equals g m over r square so this is the relationship uh that is uh relating small g and big g and this is on assumption that the earth is spherical and the mass of the earth is concentrated at the center earth is spherical and mass is at the center so those are uh, your yeah, top two assumptions in which this will be correct now let's look at the next question another assumption of this formula is that the earth is not rotating and the earth uh, possesses uniform density c says calculate the force of attraction so we just solved for force attraction to have the force of attraction is equals g m m1 over r square so this big m and small m this is this can is the same thing as g m1 m2 over r square where this is m for one body m for the other body m1 m2 so depending on how you wish to represent them and it says this is this calculate this attraction is between a star or an earth so two bodies now one body is star and the other body is earth so force of attraction between two bodies star and the earth now it says the mass of the star is 2 times 10 to the power 30 kg so let's call the mass of the star m1 and it's equals to 2 times 10 to the power of 30 kg the earth assuming the star is located from the earth so the distance between the star and the earth is that is the arrow is equals 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 kilometer so the distance between the earth and the star so those are the things we are given and we have a lot of constants already mass of the earth so mass of the earth is a constant mass of the earth is equals 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 kg and we have the gravitational constant g is equals 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square kilogram per kilogram square and we have small g is equals 10 meter per second in this question we obviously don't need small g so with this we have what we need g is given uh m1 we take at the first mass mass of the star is given distance is given mass of the earth as m2 is also given so what we'll do is simply substitute into the formula for universal gravitation substituting we simply have f is equals g 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11 times m1 is 2 times 10 to the power 30 times m2 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 over arrow square that's 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 square so uh, solving this uh, according to my calculation f is equals 3.55 times 10 to the power of 28 newton so while punching this in your calculator, you need to be very careful to avoid certain mistakes. So that is it for the force of attraction between the star and the moon, having this distance and other values as given. 
Now, uh, question D says, define the term escape velocity. Escape velocity is simply the minimum velocity a body needs to leave the gravitational influence. That is the escape velocity of a body. And the last question is asking us for the relationship between G and big G. Small g is simply acceleration due to gravity or the acceleration of free fall. Acceleration of free fall is simply a body as a force that pulls all objects down. The difference between it, the small g and big g, is that uh, this small g is not constant. It changes. If you leave the earth, acceleration due to gravity changes. It's different from what you see in the moon. This is why the weight of bodies differ. The weight of this guy here on Earth is different from when you take it to the moon and it's different from when you take it to somewhere else. So acceleration due to gravity changes. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't change. Earth's universal gravity doesn't change. Another difference between them is that big G is a scalar quantity, doesn't have direction, while small g is a vector quantity it has magnitude and it has direction weight is equals mg g is equals weight over m weight is also a vector quantity g is a vector quantity so it is a force that pulls objects down so it has direction that is it for these questions thank you for watching my video i am flash isaac feel free to subscribe to this channel flash learners to get my updates on new videos and don't forget to check out my other videos visit flashlearners.com slash videos or search flashlearners on youtube to see my amazing videos for all your topics i really appreciate your time thank you <laughs>